Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today we are playing The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, Battle in Balin's Tomb, a Middle-Earth adventure game. <sighs> this is the new two-player skirmish game from Games Workshop. And I'm not going to front load this video with rules or anything like that. We're pretty much going to dive into it and I will explain things as we go. But I will say, as with all of my playthrough videos, I am playing by myself, I'm narrating, I'm trying to make good moves. Sometimes I may omit rules or make a mistake. And also there are certain points in the rules for this game where it's a little bit unclear exactly what the intent is. So I'm not considering this video as a learning aid, it's really just to give you an idea of how the game flows so you can decide if you might like to try it out for yourself. Anyway, the idea is we have the Fellowship trapped in the tomb. They need to survive for 12 turns. If at least three members of the Fellowship have survived by the end of the game and one of them is Frodo, then the Fellowship win. If at least three survive but Frodo was killed, it's a draw. If the Fellowship is wiped out, the Goblins win. Each turn after the first turn, the Goblins will draw at least one Goblin card, which will summon reinforcements. Then all of the Goblins on the board will activate, and then all of the Fellowship will activate. And activation involves either moving then attacking, or attacking then moving. And each type of unit in the game has special abilities, which we will cover as the need arises. At the start of the game, the Fellowship are arranged in this formation, which represents how they are standing at the start of the battle in the movie and the goblin player gets to summon nine goblins of their choice at the entrance to the tomb. I have picked a row of three shieldsmen, a row of three spearmen, and then a row of three archers. And really, as we start the game, I think the only thing that you need to know in advance is how line of sight works. In this game, if you are shooting at the cave troll or a human-sized target, then only the pillars on the board or the cave troll itself will block line of sight, if you are targeting a small target, so one of the hobbits or a goblin, then any miniature will block line of sight, along with pillars and the tomb in the centre of the board, where Gimli starts. That does mean the human-sized members of the Fellowship are very open to attacks from bows, whilst the goblins have the ability to make use of shield walls to protect their spearmen and archers. Right, that's enough of that, let's get going. We are going to start by activating all of our goblins. Goblins move five spaces, we're going to advance all of our shieldsmen and all of our spearmen as far as possible. Our shield men move first, they cannot get into combat, it's too far away, but they are forming a defensive line, and now our spearmen are going to move up behind. Spearmen have the special ability that they can attack things up to two squares away, but unfortunately they have finished three squares away, so they cannot attack the heroes at the moment. If they had been one space closer, because of how the line of sight rules work, they would have been able to have jabbed over the top of their goblin allies to hit the heroes on the other side. Finally, we're going to activate our archers and we're going to position them to try and shoot Pippin. Pippin is just here. He's a very easy target, he's very exposed at the start of the game and he has very low defense. So our first goblin archer moves five spaces and he can see Pippin from there. So we roll one red dice when we attack and we are looking for a scimitar or an Eye of Sauron. We rolled the Eye of Sauron so that is a hit. Pippin now has to roll to defend, he gets one blue dice. And he does roll a shield so he shrugs off that first attack. That was a close call for the hobbits so our second archer is going to do the same thing. We attack with one red dice. And that's a goblin shield, so that's a miss. And now our third archer. I'm positioning him there so he doesn't block line of sight to his allies that are further back. One red dice. It's a goblin shield, so that's another miss. Pippin has survived that first salvo. That finishes the first goblin turn, so it's time for the fellowship to activate. First of all, we're going to reposition Legolas in an attempt to shoot all of the goblin archers. And when we're moving our characters, we need to remember there is a sudden strike rule in this game. If you move into a space that is adjacent to an enemy, and then move into a space that is no longer adjacent to that enemy, the enemy gets to make a free attack against you that you are not allowed to defend against. So when we move Legolas here, what we want to do is move him round the back of Aragorn. If we move him in front of Aragorn, we are opening ourselves up to free attacks from the goblins. So we move Legolas to there, and we are going to start by targeting this goblin right at the back. Legolas's special ability is that he can use his bow, and when he shoots with his bow, he rolls three blue dice. We have rolled a hit and a ring. This is really good news for us because, first of all, we convert that ring into a second hit. Goblins only get one red dice in defense, which means we have inflicted two wounds on the goblin, and it will die. 
Furthermore, because we rolled that ring symbol, we get to activate Legolas's second special ability. Every member of the Fellowship has a one ring special power. Legolas's special ability is if you roll the ring while you are making an attack against a non-adjacent enemy, you can make another attack against another non-adjacent enemy using one blue dice. So we're going to take a shot at this second goblin at the back here. Unfortunately, we've rolled a shield, so that is a miss. Still, one dead goblin is better than none. Next up, we're going to activate Aragorn, and we're going to position him there to protect Legolas. Aragorn's going to attack that shield goblin. Aragorn rolls three dice when he attacks. It should be noted, Aragorn also has a bow and arrow, but if he attacks at range, he only rolls two blue dice, so it's generally better to get him stuck in. And he has rolled two hits there. Goblins only ever roll one red dice in defense, so they can only block a maximum of one wound, so that goblin dies. Next up, we're going to activate Boromir, and Boromir is a really cool character because he has a special ability that says whenever he's standing adjacent to another character, that character gets to reroll one defense dice every time they are attacked. So we want to position him so he is close to as many people as possible. So I'm going to move him there adjacent to Aragorn and Legolas, and he attacks with two blue dice and he has rolled the sword and the ring there, so again, we have killed that goblin. Boromir does have a special shield bash ability that activates whenever you roll the ring. For each ring he rolls, he can push one goblin one space away from him, but as we have killed the only goblin that was next to him, we can't activate that ability this turn. But now Gimli's going to get involved in the action, and he's very upset about what has happened in the tomb. And Gimli is a bit tasty in this game because he has an ability that's always on that says he's so tough that whenever he is attacked, he immediately gets to ignore one goblin scimitar result on the red dice. And that means that when he's moving, he can completely disregard sudden strikes of opportunity because a sudden strike is only ever made with one red dice, which means the maximum you can get with that is a single hit and he will immediately shrug off that single hit. So Gimli can just plow straight into the middle of all these goblins without a care in the world. He has a movement speed of five. He rolls two blue dice when he's attacking and he's going to go for the biggest threat on the board, which is the goblin with the shield. And he rolls two hits, so that has really paid off. We have killed that other goblin. Next up, we'll activate Gandalf. Gandalf has a move of six and we want to move him so he ends up positioned next to Boromir to benefit from Boromir's buff. So I will place him there. Gandalf has a special ability he can use once per turn, which says he may use sorcerous powers to move a goblin. I can choose a goblin within three squares of Gandalf and move it up to three squares. I would really like to use that ability to reposition those archers that are at the edge of the board, but they are out of range. But what I can do is reposition one of the goblin spearmen that might be able to take a shot at Boromir. So I'm going to move the central spearman in a way so that Gandalf can crack him over the head. So I've moved him in front of Gandalf there and that move doesn't trigger sudden strikes, but Gandalf is now going to hit him with his sword. And that's a really good result for us because first of all, that ring converts into another sword so we have killed that goblin spearman. But also Gandalf has a special ability. Whenever he rolls the ring when making an attack roll, he may immediately make another attack against another enemy up to five squares away. And while the special rule doesn't state he needs line of sight, I do assume that is a prerequisite of this attack. And I think we're going to make our attack against the closest archer. The archer that's furthest away is a little bit too far out of range. And we have rolled a ring and a sword. Again, we convert that ring into a sword symbol, which means we've inflicted two wounds and we will kill the goblin. Unfortunately, Gandalf's special one ring ability does state that you can only activate it once per turn. So even though we rolled another ring, we cannot take a third attack. Still, that's another two dead goblins thanks to Gandalf. Next up, it's time to activate some hobbits and it's important to keep Frodo safe and as far away from enemies as possible. And I have found that really the best way to try and protect him is to try and get him down in this corner of the board here and then put some bodies in front of him because Frodo has a special ability that states you can only attack him if you are standing adjacent to him. So as long as he has a shield of bodies in front of him, he can't be sniped with arrows. So let's start heading him that way. He has a movement of four. And as we move him, it is important to note that just at the back of the tomb there, there is a well. 
goblins do come out of that well, so we need to make sure that we aren't suddenly going to get ambushed by something that pops out of the well and gets to attack Frodo straight away. Next up, we're going to activate Pippin, and Pippin, along with Merry and Sam in fact, have a special ability that allows them to throw rocks up to five squares. So we're going to position Pippin so that he can throw a stone at that goblin spearman menacing Gimli. So there we go, we have moved four spaces, and we are exactly within five squares of that goblin spearman. We attack with one blue dice. And we have rolled a hit, so that does force a save for the goblin spearman, who rolls one red dice. And the goblin rolls an Eye of Sauron, so we can convert that into a shield and block the damage. We just have Merry and Sam left to move, and while it would be nice to put them in a position to start throwing some stones, we are instead going to use them as a shield to protect Frodo from anything that might come out of the well. So Merry goes there, and Sam goes there. Not the best protective line I've ever seen. But that is the end of the Fellowship's turn, and the end of turn one of the game. We killed six goblins, not bad, not great. We start turn two by advancing the ring token at the top of the board. And at the beginning of turn two, we draw a single Goblin Reinforcement card. We have drawn the Goblin Reinforcements card, place any two Moria Goblins in the entrance to the tomb. The entrance to the tomb is the nine red squares at the start there, so we can place the two Goblins anywhere within those nine squares. And I have selected two Goblin Shieldsmen, the reason being they are the elite Goblins, they are the most powerful. First things first, we're going to move the Goblin Archer at the back of the map, and we're going to skirt him around the edge of the board so that he can take a shot at Sam. Now having moved that Goblin Archer, I can now see that I don't have a clear line of sight to Sam after all, because Sam is hunkered down behind the tomb. That means I'm going to have to rethink my strategy, and instead I'm going to shoot at Legolas. And I've rolled a shield, so that's a miss. Next up, I want to activate my Goblin Spearmen, and we're going to start with this one here that's adjacent to Gimli. Goblins have the ability that they can attack things at range 2 because of their long spears, and the way that Line of Sight works, if you are attacking a human-sized opponent, then you can jab your spear over intervening models. And that means we are going to lunge over Gimli's head and attack Boromir on the other side. With one red dice. And we've rolled a shield, so that's a miss. We have one more Goblin Spearman who is also going to target Boromir. And he has rolled a hit. Boromir gets three blue dice to defend. And that's a massive save. That's three shields. Boromir is a beast. Finally, we are going to activate our two Goblin Shieldsmen. Now, we don't want to go and attack Gimli at the moment. Gimli is so difficult to hurt it's usually better to just ignore him and try and kill everyone else around him, at least until the cave troll turns up, at which point you can try to make yourself a nice dwarf pate. So we're going to focus our attacks on Gandalf instead. So our first goblin moves there and attacks with two red dice. And we have rolled double shield, so that's a big miss. Now with our last goblin, I could throw him at Gandalf as well, but I'm thinking about it now and I'm wondering if maybe I should skirt around the edge of the board and try and get him as close to the hobbits as possible, put some pressure on them instead. Force the Fellowship to break up their formation a little bit, which is quite strong at the moment. Let's do that instead. So we've moved five spaces and we're putting Pippin under a little bit of pressure there. But that's the end of the Goblin phase, so it is now time for the Fellowship to activate. I think the first thing to do is we'll activate Frodo and continue his scurry to the corner of the board. We'll activate Pippin next, and he's going to throw a stone at that goblin. One blue dice. He's rolled the ring. Unfortunately, that ring won't help us in an attack situation. Both Pippin and Merry have a special ability that when they roll the ring, it counts as two shields when they're defending. But of course, we do get to convert it into a sword to hit the goblin, and the goblin has to defend. And blocks the stone with ease. No worries, Pippin is going to back off and Sam and Merry are going to join him. First Sam, and then Merry. Okay, it's time to deal with these remaining goblins. We're going to start by activating Gandalf. Gandalf is going to use his sorcerer's power to move a goblin that is within three spaces up to three spaces. And we are going to move this goblin spearman here. We're going to reposition him next to Boromir. And now Gandalf is going to attack the shieldsman that is standing next to him. We have rolled a sword and a shield, so that's one hit. The goblin does get to defend. 
and this time it's an Eye of Sauron which we can convert into a shield. The Goblin has survived and Gandalf has led us down. Next up we're going to activate Gimli and Gimli is going to attack the spearman that is adjacent to Gandalf, this little chap just here. And that's a double hit, that's an instant kill for Gimli. And now having dealt with that, Gimli is going to reposition himself to go and help the hobbits. He's going to move there so that if the goblin wants to move to chase the hobbits, he will have to face a sudden strike. Next up we'll move Aragorn and Aragorn is just going to come and see if he can clean up the mess that Gandalf left behind. He's going to move to there and attack that goblin with three blue dice. And he has rolled a sword and two rings. And this is overkill of the highest order. When Aragorn rolls the ring symbol, he can convert that into two hits. So he's rolled five hits against that goblin there. He is not messing about anymore. Next up, we'll activate Legolas and Legolas is going to shoot the archer. And we have rolled two shields, which are misses, but we also rolled the one ring. So that does convert into a hit, and we will also get to make a follow-up attack against a different target. First, our archer has to defend against this attack with one red dice. And he has rolled the Eye of Sauron, so he has survived. For Legolas's follow-up attack, he only gets to roll one dice, and we are obviously going to shoot at the spearman adjacent to Boromir. And that's a hit. The spearman rolls to defend. and has got a sword. So that's a fail, and the goblin spearman dies. Legolas could still move, but I think we're happy where he is. And we have a choice to make with Boromir. Boromir could reach either of the other goblins on the board, but I think Gimli has the shield goblin sorted out, and that single archer isn't the biggest problem in the world. If I chase that archer, I'm pulling Boromir out of formation, and I'd rather keep him close to the heroes for that buff on their defense values. So instead, I'm just going to move Boromir one space so that he is in the centre of all of my main group of heroes. I know we should suffer not the goblins to live, but hopefully that decision won't come back to bite me. That does finish the turn. At the start of turn three, we draw another goblin card and we have drawn the goblin reinforcements card that says any two Moria goblins will appear at the entrance to the tomb. That is honestly really not ideal for me because... I need more goblins to appear than that and I need them to appear at the well or at the trapdoors at the top and the bottom of the board. I'm pretty sure the Fellowship will make short work of those two new arrivals. But in order to try and give them as much longevity as possible and do as much damage as they can while they're here, I have picked two shieldsmen. First things first, our goblin with a shield is going to attack Gimli. He has very little chance of causing any damage, but let's go for it. He has rolled a single scimitar and as standard, Gimli ignores the first scimitar you roll, so that's no damage. Because there's a very good chance that Gimli is just going to smack that goblin in the head anyway when he activates this round, we may as well try to move that goblin now, just to see if we can pull the fellowship a little bit more out of formation. The way the sudden strike rule works is you only face a sudden strike if you move into a space that is no longer adjacent to the enemy. So first of all, we can skirt two spaces around Gimli to there, and then when we move our next space away from him, he gets to hit us in the back. So we move to there, and it's a single dice attack, we get no chance to defend against it. And Gimli has rolled a shield, so we have successfully broken away. We can continue our move, which means we have another two spaces we can travel. Next up, we'll activate our goblin archer at the top of the board, and we are still hungry for hobbits. And from there, it's a little bit of an edge case, but I think we can just squeeze line of sight on Merry. So we'll attack him with one red dice. It's the Eye of Sauron, so that is a hit, forcing Merry to defend. And we have rolled the ring in defense. The ring converts into two shields for the hobbits, so that's an easy deflection of that arrow. Finally, we have our two shieldsmen. We'll move the first one so that we can get into contact with Boromir and have a pop at him. We're rolling two red dice. And that's a single hit, forcing Boromir to make a save. Boromir rolls three blue dice. And he has rolled a shield, blocking that attack. Go Boromir. They need to start shooting arrows at him, really. Our final goblin, pretty much whatever he does, he's going to get killed this turn. So we might as well chuck ourselves at Gandalf. And again, we attack with two red dice. And we have rolled a double shield, so that's a big fat nothing. We might as well start the turn by moving Frodo again. We don't want to move him back so he is pinned against the wall, but we'll move him a couple of spaces. 
Next, we will have Pippin throw a rock at that goblin. It's a miss, so we'll just back off. Merry will also throw a rock at that goblin. And that's a hit, forcing the goblin to make a saving throw. That's a blank, but we do get a reroll because that goblin has a shield. And he does make the second save. Pretty tough to kill those goblins with the shields when you only inflict one wound on them. So Merry is also going to back off. Sam also gets to throw stones. He has a range of five squares, which is just enough to get a shot on that goblin. And he has rolled the ring. Sam does have a special ability that triggers on attack rolls with the ring, but only if he is adjacent to his target. So this is just a regular hit. The goblin defends. And indeed, the goblin defends. But we'll move Sam back to there. Next up, we will activate Gandalf. And Gandalf is going to start by using his sorceress power on this goblin here with the shield. And we are going to push that goblin into Gimli's attack range, like so. And then Gandalf is going to attack the goblin with the shield that is directly in front of him. And he has rolled two hits, which means despite that shield, that goblin dies. And that's very good news because it means we can start reforming our fellowship. We need to start moving a little bit further back from the entrance in case the cave troll plows in. And of course, we want to be closer to the hobbits to help them. And we'll just move there for now. Next up, we'll move Boromir. And we want Boromir to move adjacent to Gandalf, but in a position so that we can attack that goblin shieldsman. So he's going to squeeze in there. And again, he doesn't face a sudden strike from that goblin because although he moved into a space adjacent to the goblin and then continued moving, he never moved away from a space that was adjacent to the goblin. I just said goblin so many times, the word lost all meaning. But we now get to attack that goblin, rolling two blue dice. And that's a double hit. Did we expect anything less from Boromir? Next up, Aragorn is going to shoot the archer at the top of the board. Using his bow and arrow, we roll two blue dice. And we rolled two hits there as well, so we have killed that goblin too. And of course, we're going to go and reposition ourselves next to Boromir. Next up, Legolas will shoot the only goblin left on the board. And he has rolled a sword and a ring. That's two hits. That will be a kill. He would normally get to make a follow-up attack, but there's nothing left to attack at the moment. We have cleared out the goblins. Don't worry, they'll be back, and in greater numbers. But of course, I am going to reposition Legolas, so he is standing behind Boromir. It's a really good place to stand. Finally, Gimli, worrying a little bit about what might come out of that well, is going to head back towards the hobbits a bit more. He doesn't really need Boromir's help defending. So we put him there, and that finishes the turn. Not too shabby, so far. At the start of turn four, we draw another goblin card. They are coming. Any two Moria goblins appear at the entrance, and one Moria goblin appears next to the well. So we're going to bring a shieldsman in at the well, and we're going to bring in two archers at the entrance. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and position our archers so that we can shoot some hobbits. That goblin moves there, and he has a nice clear line of sight on Pippin. And it's a hit. We roll to defend. And we have failed our saving throw. Pippin only has a single wound. There's nothing we can do about it. Pippin is dead. We will move our second archer and see if we can take out Merry as well. One red dice. And it's an Eye of Sauron, so that's another hit. And we failed the saving throw again. Merry immediately goes down. It sucks to be a hobbit. And of course, we have very easily broken the hobbit shield wall, which means our goblin with the shield can sneak around that pillar and attack Frodo. He rolls two dice to attack. And it's two hits. Frodo rolls two dice in defense and only has two wounds. And what can you do against such reckless hate from my dice? Frodo has died. And that means at this point, the Fellowship cannot hope to win. The best we can do is eke out a draw. And it was all going so well. This highlights my biggest problem with this game. It's incredibly difficult to avoid the archers and it's very, very easy to kill the hobbits, even Frodo. I think the intent is that you're supposed to use Boromir to help protect the hobbits. That was obviously something he was known for doing in the films, but if he goes off to help the hobbits, all of the other fellowship lose the saving buffs, and it only takes a few bad dice rolls for them to start dying. And once you lose Aragorn or Gandalf or Legolas, it really does become quite a challenge. But anyway, let's see what we can salvage from this absolute mess. 
to start with, I guess we may as well activate Sam. He's going to attack that goblin that's next to him with one blue dice. It's a hit. He's angry. The goblin defends. See, the goblins have no problem rolling shields. Right, Gimli's going to go over there and have a chat. We roll two blue dice. It's a double hit, and that goblin dies. Next up, I think Legolas is going to reposition himself slightly and shoot at the goblin archers. We'll shoot the one that's furthest away. That's two hits, that's a kill. If only my defensive rolls had been as good as my attacking rolls. Next, we'll activate Gandalf, and Gandalf will use his sorcerous power to reposition that goblin. We will put him there, and then Gandalf will hit him. Two shields. Gandalf, you're failing us. But it's okay because Aragorn's going to reposition himself and he's going to have a go too. He's going to go around to there and he rolls three blue dice. Still only a single hit. The goblin gets to defend. And of course, he makes his saving throw. Right. Boromir's going to reposition himself as uh, well as he can. He was hoping to stand in the space that that goblin was standing on, but apparently that goblin doesn't want to die. So we'll go there instead and roll two blue dice. We have rolled one ring, so that is a hit. The goblin has to defend. And of course, it defends. Now, here's the thing. Boromir has his shield bash ability. When it activates, he can pick a goblin that is adjacent and move it one space. We could, if we wanted to, push this goblin archer. But I honestly don't see the point because I feel like there's something missing from this shield bash rule. It feels a little bit like after you've made the shield bash rule, Boromir should be able to step into the space that that goblin was in, or the goblin that you shield bash is stunned and has to miss its next turn, or if you shield bash them into a wall or a pillar, then they take damage. But there's nothing there like that. It's simply move the goblin one space and that's it. By the way, I'm already thinking of lots of ways to adjust this game, which I don't normally do. I don't really like house ruling stuff normally, but at the very least, Frodo needs a mithril vest so that there's some extra way to keep him alive. Because even with all of his defensive perks, he dies way too easily. But that's enough of that. It's turn five. And we have drawn a goblin ambush. Place any one Moria goblin next to each of the trapdoors. Definitely going with archers for now. We're just going to see if we can sit back and ping some hit points off of these characters. The goblin archer that survived to the end of the last round is quite clearly in a predicament. He's not going to attempt to move because he will face so many strikes of opportunity, it's unbelievable. So instead, he is just going to attack Boromir from where he is with one red dice. And he has rolled a hit. Boromir gets three blue dice to defend. And he does roll a shield. Next up, the goblin at the bottom of the board is going to try to get some eyes on Sam. We'll see if we can take out the last of those pesky hobbits. Just there is good. One red dice. And he misses. The goblin at the top of the board is going to make an opportunistic strike on Boromir from there, and then he will scurry along the top of the board to try and position himself to take out Sam next turn. So one dice against Boromir. It's another hit. Boromir doesn't like arrows. Come on, Boromir. And he defends it just. So now that goblin will move. So first of all, we may as well see if Sam can throw a stone at that archer. He's going to move to get into range. So we'll just go to there and roll one blue dice. It's a hit. The goblin rolls to defend. And fails. Next up, Gandalf is going to attack that goblin archer. It's a single hit. The archer gets to defend. But he fails and finally that archer dies and we will reposition Gandalf slightly to there. Next, Legolas is going to go and stand on the tomb so that he can get line of sight on that archer at the back. We roll three blue dice. And we've rolled two hits, so that is a success. Once again, there are no goblins on the board, but the damage has been done. Let's move Aragorn so that he's standing up on the tomb as well, and then we'll reposition Boromir for maximum defensive abilities. It's the start of turn six, and they have a cave troll. But it gets worse because at the start of turn six, you actually draw two goblin cards. So the troll has arrived with an entourage of two more goblins. Of course, we'll go for archers because we're still trying to deal with Sam. First, let's activate the troll. The troll moves six spaces. 
and because of his big long monkey boy arms, the troll can attack things up to three spaces away, so unfortunately Gandalf is in range and will face a two dice attack. We have rolled one shield and one eye of Sauron, so that's one hit on Gandalf. Gandalf rolls three dice in defense. And yeah, Gandalf just brings the magic. That's three one ring symbols. Next up, we're gonna see if we can get these archers to kill Sam. So that one will go there. It's a miss. The other one will go there. And also misses. Okay, let's start by activating Sam. He's going to move as far as he can, and he's going to throw a stone at the closest archer. He's just in range, rolls one dice. It's a ring. Goblin defends. Yeah, that's a shield. Okay, we're going to activate Gandalf next, and Gandalf is going to get stuck into that cave troll. We've got four heroes on the board here who can all plow attacks into the cave troll. Hopefully, we can kill it before it gets to activate again. So first, Gandalf moves. He has moved adjacent there. Before he attacks, he's going to use his sorceress power on the goblin archer that is furthest away from him, and he's going to pull that goblin three spaces closer to there. Gandalf then attacks the cave troll with two blue dice. It's two hits. Unfortunately, no ring symbol. A ring symbol would have been really nice. The cave troll defends with two red dice and one special grey dice. And he rolls three shields, easily shrugging off the damage. Expect that to happen a lot. Next up, Legolas is going to shoot the troll from where he is. And he has rolled two shields and a hit. That's poor. Troll defends. And not surprisingly, easily shrugs that off too. Next, here comes Boromir. And he has got a single hit. And his ring symbol that allows him to do a shield bash only works against goblins, obviously. He's not going to be shoving this cave troll around. And the cave troll easily defends that too. Right, Aragorn is joining in, and he could shoot the cave troll at range, but instead, He's going to go into hand-to-hand -hand combat. He does have the potential to kill the cave troll with a single attack. It's unlikely, but let's give it a go. Really bad roll. It's a single hit. And the cave troll, not messing about. That's four shields. Finally, we're going to move Gimli. And obviously the reason we repositioned that goblin archer by Gandalf was so that Gimli could actually get into contact with something and fight this turn. He attacks with two blue dice. One hit, the archer defends, and dies. At least something died this turn. And that ends turn six. Turn seven is going to be rough. Turn seven starts with a goblin at each trapdoor and one at the well. So we have gone for an archer at the top trapdoor and then shieldsman at the bottom trapdoor and the well. But we also have to draw a second goblin card. And it's another goblin at the well. And we have a problem here because I forgot to reposition Legolas next to Boromir. So Legolas has a very good chance of being absolutely mullered this round. Let's find out. First of all, the goblin archer at the top of the board is going to shoot at Legolas. It's a miss. We then have these shield gobbos by the well and they are both going to try and take down the elf princeling. The first one attacks with two red dice. Nothing. Now the second one. Nothing. We really, really lucked out there. The other goblin archer on the board is going to reposition himself and shoot at Sam. We'll just do it from there. It's a hit. Sam gets two blue dice to defend. And he does. Just. But Sam's woes aren't over yet. We have another shield goblin who is also going to attack him. Two red dice. Two hits. Ouch. Sam needs to roll two defensive symbols, otherwise he dies. He got one. One isn't enough. Sam only has a single wound, so he is dead. If we lose three more members of the Fellowship, we have lost. And of course, we mustn't forget we have a Cave Troll. When the Cave Troll is adjacent to a target, it will attack with two red and one grey dice, potentially inflicting massive damage. And of course, we're going to hit Boromir. That's three hits. That could kill Boromir with a single blow. Come on, Boromir. No whammies. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. Dice have never been that kind to me ever in the history of my board gaming life. 
Boromir lives to fight another day. We're still on for dealing with this flipping cave troll. First things first, let's start with Aragorn. Aragorn has the best chance of putting some serious damage on the cave troll, and it might help me form the rest of the turn in my mind. Okay, we have rolled a hit and a ring. That's three hits total. Come on, let's inflict at least some damage on this big beastie. That is one Eye of Sauron, which is one shield, which means two wounds get through. Cave Trolls get five, so we have three wounds left to take. I could reposition Aragorn, but I would face an attack of opportunity from the Cave Troll, so I think I will stay where I am. Next up, we have Boromir. Boromir rolls the ring and the sword. That's another two hits. And the troll blocks one attack, so one hit gets through. That's three damage total, two left on the troll. Okay, next, Legolas is going to shoot at the cave troll. And we have rolled two rings. That's amazing for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's two hits on the cave troll, but also it means we get to make two follow-up attacks on other characters that aren't adjacent to Legolas. First, we roll for the cave troll's defense. We've rolled one shield, so one wound gets through, the cave troll still has one hit point left. But now Legolas gets his two bonus attacks. We are going to shoot at the archer at the top of the board. That's a miss. And the goblin with the shield at the bottom of the board. That's a hit. The goblin with the shield defends and blocks it. Not Legolas's finest hour. And unfortunately, if Legolas tries to move now, he's going to face two sudden strikes so he is going to stay where he is. He's just going to have to weather the storm for now. Next up, Gandalf is going to attack the cave troll. Two blue dice. One hit. The cave troll defends. And gets one shield. For a second there, I thought he'd fluffed it, but no, he's still alive. Right, well, I was hoping to send Gimli off to fight some goblins, but Gimli's going to have to try and deal with that cave troll, see if he can take its kneecaps out. Let's hope we can finish this off. Two blue dice. One shield and one ring. Unfortunately, Gimli's ring is only a defensive move, so the troll is only defending against a single hit. And he does roll an Eye of Sauron, just enough to defend that final wound. Unfortunately, the cave troll is still with us. As if that wasn't bad enough, it's the end of turn seven. We will have another two goblin cards to deal with. First, two goblins turn up at the entrance, and then another two goblins turn up at the entrance. And I have gone for two goblin archers, one goblin shieldsman, and one goblin spearman. And I think to start, we're going to try to kill Legolas. We will use the shieldman adjacent to Legolas to attack. The first one gets a single hit, and he defends the attack. The second shieldsman attacks. And that's two hits. That's really bad news for Legolas because Legolas only has two wounds. We defend one, we take a wound. Things are getting really tense now. Next up, the archer at the top of the board will shoot Legolas. It's a hit. Come on, Legolas, just one shield. Yes, we're still in the fight. We have an archer at the bottom of the board. He's going to move around and shoot at Legolas too. There will do. He's missed. And then the archers at the door are also going to move into positions to shoot Legolas. One from there. It's a hit. Come on, Legolas. Yes! That was a good save. And then our last goblin archer. One dice. It's a miss. We have one more goblin with shield at the bottom of the board. He is also going to have a go at Legolas. From there, rolling two red dice. One hit. Legolas defends. He's rolled a ring. He deflects that attack too. Still in it, but only just. And then we've got the other two goblins by the door. The one with the shield is going to go and attack Gimli because he actually has a chance of injuring Gimli. He attacks with two red dice and rolls two shields. And then our remaining goblin spearman is going to move as close as possible so that next turn he can get involved. Finally, we have the cave troll and he's going to attack Gimli because Gimli only gets two dice in defense and Gimli's ability to ignore a goblin scimitar is only in effect when he's attacked by goblins. So it doesn't work against the cave troll. So we roll two red and a gray. And we completely fluff it. That's ridiculous. Obviously the four wounds on the cave troll have made him a little bit wobbly. 
it's the start of the Fellowship's turn, and I guess we start by activating Aragorn, who again has the best chance of inflicting any damage on the Cave Troll. But he only rolls a single hit. The Cave Troll defends. And rolls nothing! Unbelievably, that single wound is enough to take down the Cave Troll. The Cave Troll dies. That's pretty amazing because that's him done now. He won't be coming back. And now we are free to move Aragorn, and I think we need to move him in such a way that he can start helping Legolas, if Legolas survives next turn. Next, Boromir is going to activate, and he's going to position himself next to Legolas to provide his defensive benefits. And then we will attack this goblin here that's standing next to Aragorn. Two hits, that's a kill. Next, we're going to activate Gandalf, and we are going to try and free Legolas up so he can move around a little bit if he needs to. So we will position Gandalf there. We will then use our Sorceress power to move the goblin with the shield that is menacing Legolas up on the tomb, moving him round there so he's on the other side of Aragorn. We will then attack the shield goblin next to us. That's two hits and a magic ring. So first of all, we have killed that goblin with the shield, he is unable to defend against two hits. But now, Gandalf gets to activate his special ability, which gives him a second attack against a target within five spaces. So we are going to take a pot shot at this archer down here. Two hits, that's a kill. Next up, we will activate Legolas, and Legolas is going to shoot at this archer at the back here. It's two hits, so it is a kill, but unfortunately we didn't roll any rings, so nothing else we can do there. But we still have Gimli to activate, and he is going to bash that goblin that's standing next to him. One hit. The goblin fails his first roll, but does get a re-roll. And he does make the re-roll. And unfortunately, that's the end of the turn. There's still a lot of goblins on the board, still a lot of problems for me, and Legolas is probably not going to survive the round. And at the start of turn 9, we have drawn goblin reinforcements. Two Moria goblins appear at the entrance. And our second card is we cannot get out. We have one Moria goblin next to each trapdoor, one Moria goblin next to the tomb entrance, and one next to the well. Oof, that's a lot of goblins. I have placed two goblin archers and a goblin spearman at the entrance. I have placed goblin shieldsmen at each trapdoor and a goblin spearman at the well. First of all, we may as well have our goblin shieldsman attack Gimli because he's adjacent to him anyway. And that's a miss. Next, we have a goblin shieldsman next to Aragorn, so he's going to attack. He's rolled two hits. Aragorn gets three blue dice to defend. He's defended one. He is adjacent to Boromir, so he can re-roll one dice. Looking for a shield or a ring. And there's the shield. We defend the attack. Next, our goblin spearman by the well will advance one space and jab at Legolas with his spear. One dice. It's a hit. Legolas defends with two dice. And rolls two rings, so he easily shrugs off the attack. Next, the shieldsman down by the bottom trapdoor will run up and attack Legolas as well. Two hits. Legolas needs to defend both of these hits or he goes down. We've defended one. We do get a re-roll from Boromir. And we get it. That's unbelievable. Next, we have the goblin with the shield at the top of the board. He's going to go and attack Aragorn. Two red dice. Two shields. That's nothing. We then have a cheeky little spearman in the middle of the board. He's going to go and take a jab at Legolas. It's a hit. Legolas defends. One shield. He's still in the game. We have one more goblin spearman who's going to advance. And then we have four archers on the board. And all of them are going to take shots at Legolas. That's a miss. Shot two. That's a miss. Shot three. That's a hit. Two defense dice. That's two swords. We get one reroll. And we don't get it. That's it. Legolas is dead. We have one archer left, and he is going to shoot at Gandalf because Gandalf is not benefiting from Boromir's rerolls. And he misses. That is the end of the goblin turn, so the fellowship now get to activate. If we lose two more members, it's game over. So I think first of all, Aragorn is going to attack one of the shield goblins next to him. And that's overkill. Boromir is going to advance one step closer to Aragorn to provide his defensive bonus and attack the shield goblin there. One hit. 
The goblin fails its defensive roll but gets a reroll. And fails the reroll too. That's amazing. First of all, Gandalf is going to use his Sorcerous Blast to move the goblin with the shield out of the way. Then Gandalf is going to go and join Boromir and whack one of those spearmen. And gets nothing again. So Gimli is going to attack the goblin that's next to him. One hit. The goblin defends. And saves it. But Gimli can break away from this combat with the goblin without any fear of a sudden strike because of his special ability. So I am going to move Gimli and just go and join Gandalf and the others. I think at this point, we're just going to stand in a circle, sing Kumbaya and hope the goblins go away. Turn nine is over. We are going into turn 10. Our first goblin card is Drums in the Deep. Any two goblins at the well. And our second is Goblin Ambush. One goblin at each trapdoor. We actually only had three goblins left in reserve, so I put them all out. We have two with shields next to the well and one with a spear next to the trapdoor at the top. And now they are going to do bad things to the Fellowship. First things first, all of my archers are going to shoot at Boromir. That's one. The second one hits. Boromir defends. Third shot. That's a hit. Boromir easily defends. Fourth shot. Is a hit. And Boromir defends. Next up, we have a spearman who's going to attack Boromir. That one just there. It's a miss. Our other spearmen are also going to advance in to attack Boromir. That one will attack from there. And hits. And Boromir rolls three shields. That one's going to move there and jab at Boromir. It's a hit. And that's another three shields. We have one final spearman, the one next to Gandalf. He's going to jab past Gandalf at Boromir. And misses. We have this goblin shieldsman here. He's going to move into a position to attack Boromir next turn. And then we have two more goblin shieldsmen by the well who are going to move and attack Gandalf. Actually, I've moved him there. And now I can see that if I take an arcing route out around Aragorn, I can just about get back into contact and attack Boromir instead from there. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And that's one hit. Three dice. And finally, Boromir's defensive abilities fail him. He takes a wound from that attack. The other shieldsman from the well is going to attack Gandalf. Rolls one hit. Gandalf defends. Easily defends. And then we have this last shieldsman down at the bottom here. He is also going to advance and attack Gandalf. One hit. And Gandalf defends. We have weathered the storm there. Boromir really shrugged off a lot of attacks. And if you're wondering why I'm piling all of my attacks onto Boromir, it's because Boromir doesn't get a reroll himself. He only gives it to allies adjacent to him. Yeah, let's start with Aragorn. He's going to attack the shieldsman next to him. One hit. The shieldsman fails its first defensive roll, gets a reroll. And fails that one too. That's good. Aragorn now has the option to move, but if he does, he will face an attack from the goblin shieldsman next to Gandalf. So I kind of have to stay put. Next, I will activate Gandalf, and Gandalf is going to use his sorcerer's power first to push a goblin spearman. And it's going to be the one that is just north of Boromir. And we've just done that to free up Boromir to reposition himself around the back of Aragorn to fight some more goblins. Gandalf now gets to make an attack and I guess we're going to attack the Goblin Spearman because that's the easiest thing to kill at the moment. One hit. The Goblin defends. And indeed defends. Gandalf has really not been on his game today. Next up, we're going to activate Boromir and he's going to sneak round the back of Aragorn. And we attack the Goblin with two dice. So that is a hit and the Goblin has to defend. It fails but gets a reroll and fails again, so it is dead. Now Boromir did roll his ring symbol, so he does get to do his shield bash, but obviously he has nothing to bash, so he's just gonna stay where he is. Finally, Gimli is going to strike the goblin with the shield right next to him. And he has rolled a single hit. The goblin fails its defensive roll and fails its re-roll too, that's unbelievable. And now just to get the defensive bonus from Boromir and also to create a bit of a shield wall between Boromir and the other attackers, Gimli is going to move next to Aragorn. 
That's the best I can do, and the turn is over. We go into turn 11, and at the start of turn 11, we draw three goblin cards. The first card we have drawn is Goblin Ambush, place one goblin at each trapdoor. The second card we have drawn is another Goblin Ambush, place one goblin at each trapdoor. And fun fact, we only have three goblins in reserve, so we can only do three goblins maximum. We still draw our third goblin card, but it's irrelevant. I feel we lucked out a bit there because it was going to be a goblin at the well. I only had three goblins with shield, so I placed two at the top trapdoor and one at the bottom trapdoor. And now it's time for Boromir to face some archery four different shots. First one, it's a miss. Second one, it's a hit. And Boromir defends with one ring. Third shot, miss. And fourth shot, it's a hit. And we roll the shield, which defends it. Next, we have a goblin spearman next to Gandalf. He's going to jab at Boromir. It's a miss. We have two goblin spearmen in the centre of the board. They're going to position themselves so they can both jab at Boromir too. One from there. It's a hit. And Boromir defends. And then one spearman from there jabbing through Gandalf. It's a hit. And Boromir defends it. We have one more spearman. We'll do him in a moment. We're going to activate all of our goblins with shields first. The one at the bottom trapdoor is going to advance. Not quite close enough to get into combat. The one at the top trap door has just enough movement to get around to attack Boromir. From there, it's one hit, three dice to defend, and we're fine. The other two shield goblins can't really get to Boromir easily, so they're both going to attack Aragorn instead. First that one, one hit. Aragorn defends, and then that one from there. No hits. We have one spearman left to move, he's going to move and attack Aragorn as well. From there. It's a hit. And Aragorn saves it easily. Okay, we'll start the Fellowship's turn with Boromir. He's going to attack the shield goblin adjacent to him. Two hits is a kill, but he is going to stay where he is. Next up, we will activate Gandalf. And Gandalf is going to move this goblin spearman here, just to get him away from Boromir a bit. And then Gandalf is going to attack the spearman adjacent to him. Two shields. Seriously, Gandalf. Utterly useless old man. Next up, Aragorn is going to activate and he is going to attack the spearman next to him. The reason being, we only have to survive one more turn and the goblin shieldsman won't be able to get round the back of him to attack Boromir, whereas spearman will be able to jab through him. We've got a single hit which is not defended, the goblin spearman dies. Finally, we have Gimli, and Gimli might as well whack the goblin that's right next to him. Two shields, nothing. The Fellowship are obviously very, very tired. And so am I, actually. We go into turn 12, and really, at this point, it's just going to be an attrition thing. Can the Fellowship survive enough dice rolls? And our first of three goblin cards is two Moria goblins at the entrance. And we only have two goblins in reserve, so they're going to be popped over right next to the entrance of the tomb and will play no part in this game. There we go, one with a spear, one with a shield, late to the party. Let's start this round with our archery again, all targeting Boromir. First shot. It's a miss. Second shot. It's a hit. And Boromir defends. Third shot. It's a hit. And Boromir defends. Last one, I think. I've lost count. It's a hit. And Boromir does not defend and takes a second wound. He's still in it, but only just. At this point, I am pretty confident we have played the goblins to a draw because they still need to kill two characters to win. Even if Boromir dies, that's not going to be enough. But let's find out. First, we've got this goblin with a shield here. He's going to sneak around the back and attack Boromir. Two red dice. It's two hits. And Boromir only saves one. Boromir, at last, has died. But I think he may have drawn enough fire to save the day. We will see. We will miss his reroll ability, though. I think at this point, we are all just going to reform and try to fight Aragorn. We have two shieldsmen next to Aragorn. They will both attack. That's a miss with the first one but a double hit with the second one. But Aragorn defends them both. 
That was really tense because that would have been me eating my words if Aragorn died. But we now have three goblins. It's our final three attacks of the game. All three attacks need to inflict at least one wound for Aragorn to die. So let's rank them up and see what happens. So there we go, three spearmen. First attack. It's a hit. Aragorn defends. And that gets through. Second attack. Oh, it's a hit. Aragorn has to defend this attack. And he does. And he does. That means we can't lose at this point. Third and final attack on Aragorn. Out of spite. And we miss. We could play out the Fellowship's final turn, but there is no point. At this moment in time, we have indeed survived 12 turns with at least three members of the Fellowship alive. Unfortunately, one of those members isn't Frodo, and that means rather than a win for the Fellowship, this is just a draw. A hard-fought draw, very, very close game, and probably the best performance from the Fellowship I've seen yet. We got very, very unlucky with that one turn where we lost all of our hobbits, but that happens in this game. The game does lean very, very heavily on the dice mechanisms because there's just not really enough terrain and things like that to break up the line of sight and protect you from those archers. I do think the game needs a little bit of something extra and I definitely think it needs an elevation system. So you do have more options for defending your characters. Off the top of my head, I'm thinking of giving every character in the game a height measurement, with one being goblins and hobbits, two being humans, three being the cave troll, and then also giving height values to the area around the edge of the board and the tomb as well. I'm also toying with the idea of giving Frodo a mithril vest. I think it would be nice to have a last minute chance to rescue him. And again, off the top of my head, what I'm thinking is the first time Frodo is reduced to zero wounds, you flip his character card and he comes back into the game with one wound point. Just something to keep him in the game a little bit longer because I've never seen him survive to the end. I've never seen the Fellowship manage to win. You can sometimes eke out a very, very tight draw, but a win just seems so hard to achieve. My other main issue with this game is I think the first few turns of the game are really exciting. There's a lot to think about in terms of placement. You will notice how I had to keep repositioning my team around Boromir and I was running the hobbits off to the side. Lots of things to think about. Towards the end of the game, once you get to sort of turn 10, 11, 12, you really are just playing the odds. You are rolling dice and seeing which team loses the dice rolls. There are still a few things you can do, a few strategies you can employ. Obviously, you want to keep trying to make sure everyone's around Boromir. You want to keep making sure that characters like Gimli are blocking all of those shield goblins because those are the really nasty ones that can really do some damage. But once Legolas is dead, you don't really have any way of dealing with goblin archers anymore. Yes, Aragorn has a bow, but he's usually far too busy hitting things with his sword. You need Legolas to be able to pick off those targets at range. And he can do it really, really well if he rolls a lot of rings, but as soon as he takes a couple of hits, he goes down. He's far too flimsy. I don't see why he doesn't have three defense dice. He's an elf prince, and he's incredibly quick and flippy. He's probably harder to hit than any other character in the game, and that should be reflected in his defense value. Finally, I just think the hobbits are so worthless in this game. They're very easy to kill, and I guess that's sort of part of the point of the game. You want to start off trying to protect the hobbits and the goblins are going to focus on killing them because it's easy points. It's an easy way to try and level the playing field. But really, Frodo is just there to hide. He's like an objective marker rather than a member of the team. And Sam, Pippin and Merry are so weak in combat, they really have very little chance of doing anything of worth. And that is at odds with the Lord of the Rings. That is at odds with the narrative of the story. The whole point is the small hobbits are supposed to be the ones that make the big difference. They are the ones that can save the day. People don't expect them to be able to achieve greatness, but they can. They are overlooked and then they succeed. And that just isn't reflected in this game where they just get a whooping. So yeah, overall, I do think it's a fun little game. I think it does start to drag a little bit towards the end. I think the start of the game is better than the end of the game. And I do think they streamlined the rules a little bit too much. I do think there should be elevation. There should be some additional rules for line of sight. 
maybe some extra terrain elements that you could add to the board. And while I don't like house ruling stuff, I can see myself introducing a few other rules to this game, just to add a few more decision points that I think might be lacking at the moment. Overall, a fun little entry level game. I think parents will have a lot of fun with it with their children, casual gamers will have a lot of fun with it, and of course it's got a really strong theme and you get some really nice miniatures that you can also then use in the Middle Earth strategy battle game. I have no problems with adding this to my collection. And that's about all I have to say about that. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye.